Our next speaker is Tom Boshart, who's the founder and director of Accept Integrated Sustainability Design, a group that powerfully integrates science and research, design and engineering, business and management toward their symbiosis in development framework. We're delighted to have Tom share his experience of working on over 600 projects worldwide and simulate our thoughts on the futures of thriving cities. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Beth, for that introduction. My name is Tom Boschaert. Um, I uh, am the director and the founder of Accept Integrated Sustainability. The core of the question that we really look at is uh, how can we look forward and, and act today to start flourishing as humanity on this planet? A part of that challenge is uh, certainly uh, that we have to deal with a lot of competing challenges at the same time. Some of them are infrastructural in nature, have to do with energy, pollution in the environment. Others have to do with people, how we organize ourselves, how we distribute value, how we distribute power. Uh, some of them has to do with how we deal with the ecosystems around it and how we deal with you know, the intersection of our industrialized society with nature and, and the, the place that we live. And we see that the challenge is to find solutions that bring all of these together and not just focus on the single issue items. And with that team, we've done many different things from small community projects to very large infrastructures, looking at the future of nations and islands. And everything's always done from a systemic long-term perspective. And that way we try to develop great places to live, work, play and prosper. We've been working on algae farms to uh, uh, help local communities prosper in an economic sense and also make use of the ecological resources that they have in a positive way. And also very high tech things like uh, vertical agriculture, growing food inside of buildings for urban environments, also completely financially viable. So that business side of things is a very important component of it, including the social aspects of who stands to benefit and how are the power relationships within the systems that we create. And of course, nature is uh, often the engine behind all of it, really feeding and, 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 and empowering the systems that we do, while also increasing uh, quality of the air and water, increasing biodiversity, increasing um, the livelihoods of people that depend on this for a long time. So the way that we do it, the way that we approach it was always uh, in a systemic sense. That means that uh, we go through a rigorous process to do it, but also we look at society from a systemic perspective to make sure that we include all of the aspects that are important, but also to look at more long-term patterns of how our society and the nature of our society develops. So symbiosis in development is uh, the framework that we've developed for the past 20 years. Uh, it combines all of these aspects of circular economy, blue economy, systems thinking, but also natural capital, uh, social justice into one uh, single approach. Uh, we divide up uh, society along a couple of object categories, like energy and materials, but also ecosystems and species. Economy and culture as a whole, it's our society and also of the individual happiness and health of everyone that is involved. And that together culminates into three different aspects of sustainability, one of them being autonomy, and autonomy being to be able to take care of yourself. So that's the circular economy, having enough energy, material resources, and so on. One of them is resilience, which means that uh, your capacity of dealing with unexpected events, your capacity to adapt, uh, to uh, quickly respond to changing conditions, and harmony, which has to do with power divisions, social inclusivity, social justice issues, and so on. So if uh, a system like a city or, or a country is sustainable, it means that it can take care of itself, it can uh, react positively and, and, and recover from unexpected events, whether or not they're natural or, or man-made, uh, and they're harmonious so that the people inside are at peace with one another. And that's when we say we have created a sustainable system, which is definitely something uh, we do not yet have. So the process goes from initiation and team formation, including stakeholders, including involving the community, collecting a lot of data, doing systemic analysis, using system mapping uh, tools and uh, looking at different things like complexity analysis. And then we go through a solution innovation phase, which involves co-creation with all those different disciplines. And then together we work on the execution of the plan, making a feasibility study and making sure that it can be executed, it's financially sound, it's responsible from an engineering perspective, and so on. So the whole uh, methodology has been written down in a book, 
Uh, it's also completely free to download as a PDF on this website here. So if you're interested, it's also open source, which means that you can use any part of it to your own benefit. So part of the co-creation, system mapping, looking at the energy material flows, ecosystem responses, uh, economic flows and connectivity, social aspects, and so on. For each project that we do, we make these maps to communicate and learn and uh, improve our insight. And these can get quite complex, but uh, the visual representation, so the combination of the science and, uh, and the design, really helps in this regard to make sure that everyone that's involved, from the psychologists and the ecologists to the engineers and the politicians and the investors, all kind of understand what we're talking about. And that's very essential in uh, that process. One other project I would like to show you, it's more on the social side of things. This is an uh, existing social housing neighborhood in uh, the city of Rotterdam. And it was really in a poor condition with a lot of crime, uh, a lot of household waste, uh, feelings of insecurity, friction between different uh, groups within the community. And the challenge for us was with very limited financial means to uh, create a development plan over 20 years time to make this one of the most sustainable communities in the world. So we set out and we involved more than 100 uh, different stakeholders, including many of the uh, participants and the community members uh, themselves. We went proactively out to find them and talk with them into high schools and community centers and going uh, to people's houses. And also, again, making those systemic analyses and trying to make a plan that's both from an energy material standpoint, from an ecological pan for, uh, standpoint and food production, but also from a social standpoint, very important to try to find uh, ways to reconnect the population, to provide empowerment to people for to take self-control and responsibility and have that community uh, really be supported in, uh, in their development. So here's an example of a system map. This is uh, mostly energy material uh, loops. You can see that it's entirely closed in about 20 years where all the energy materials of all the housing blocks are uh, kept within the community and a lot of food is being produced by using the interstitial spaces between the buildings. Uh, this is a very technical perspective, but each one of these blocks has a social aspect to it. And one of the beautiful results of that is that the food production that we've planned in the intermediate spaces all has a social component to it. So there are components uh, that where the elderly population uh, has assigned agriculture areas where they can together decide and with the help of professional growers uh, produce food, mostly bringing them together and resolving issues like loneliness and uh, support. And that has been of great value also for the social service agencies that are operating within the neighborhood. But also uh, we detected that there was a quite large population of women in families uh, with an Islamic background from a traditional perspective. They were not allowed to leave the house. And so we found a way to make these gardens as an official extension of the house. The private garden can be an extension of the house so these women could leave and they could start tending with their garden. And when that happened, they started getting connections with each other. And they were very eager to do that, and that developed into a very strong social community that eventually was able to break through some of those traditional patterns. And that allowed this uh, uh, community of women to emancipate themselves and to start their own little company in uh, catering for uh, office lunches and so on, all generated from their own private gardens. So there was a respect from the religious backgrounds and the traditional values. And there were uh, a lot of very happy people and there was a huge breach of an impasse from a social perspective. And here in the top left corner, you can see uh, the women that founded uh, their own catering company. In the top right, you see uh, a restaurant that was created, also a community uh, event where people could eat for just five euros and people could learn to cook and also learn to work in a restaurant at the same time. And in the bottom right, you see one of the elderly um, uh, people that lived in the community that had a background in greenhouse construction. We arranged a, a second uh, hand little greenhouse and he provided the nursery to actually, you know, go from seed to, to uh, small baby plants. And he hands them out to the community, which makes it much, much easier for people to grow their own food. And there's all of this interaction that really boosted this entire community, while uh, you know, the buildings themselves are reasonably uh, untouched and can develop over a 20-year period.
there were lots and lots and lots of uh, neighborhoods got safer. Uh, uh, the rankings in happiness of people uh, uh, went much higher. Self-education, cultural exchanges taking place, but also the economic value of the place rose, which was really good for the property developers involved. I hope to have given you a, a little bit of an uh, introduction and uh, I hope to talk to all of you soon. Uh, good luck in the conference and I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Tom.